let's get going, let's get going. We've been dilly-dallying, but dilly-dallying is good. It's good to take your time as I'm going through this matrix here, uh, the, the categories that we're going to be referring to, these subjects, and we're going to be referring to these subjects, and that's all we're going to do, and we're going to have a wonderful time getting into the Word of God as we hammer home a few things and lay down some railroad tracks so that we know where we are. So we can cruise along the old railroad track. Now this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We greet you in the only name given amongst men. Now I have the matrix here, but we're going to get to love in the womb here. Let's get going. And this will be part two of love in the womb. And there's only going to be a few videos because I only have about 50 points I want to make, okay? And I'm going to get back to the matrix and to, I have some lessons I'm giving on what is Christianity which is basic sound doctrine, okay? Which is number category what? Number two, which are basics. Repentance, baptism, those are all basics, okay? Now, let's get to 7.6 there, which is you as a human being beautiful. Beauty starts in the womb, and, and babies are absolutely beautiful things that we're going to spend some time here talking about. Uh, and we're not going to spend that much time on We will spend some time because we because it's worth our time. It's, it's a big part of your Bible where David talks about being born. And, of course, Elizabeth gives us a wonderful peek into the life of a womb baby. Okay, that's what we're going to do. It's not very difficult uh, or complicated. Okay, it's not uh, exponential uh, Einstein light year extrapolations, which don't exist, but that's okay. We, we won't go into that. Let's get going. That's, that doesn't mean the math doesn't exist. It means that what he's referring to doesn't exist. Now, love in the womb. It's a short series here. Let's get going. And uh, let's go to number one. Number one is human breathing red dirt. Uh, Adam is red dirt. That's what Adam means. Uh, uh, God created a human out of dirt. And what he did was he breathed in that mold of, of, of mud, he breathed in four ounces that, that never dies. When a person dies, they don't die. Their body dies. When the master refers to death, he refers to death as conditions. Now I repeat this over and over again. And I'll do it again right here. It, it, we, need, we need to spend some time on this. When, when the master refers to death or life, and only two, he refers to death as being away from light and color and beauty. When you're divorced from light and color and design and like freedom to express yourself in, those, in that environment, then that's called death. Death is not what you might consider death, because the soul never dies. It's very interesting. Let's add this note. Where the master tells the devil, uh, he says, he says, uh, man shall not live by bread alone. In other words, man is going to die if all he thinks about are provisions and things that God has provided for him from a selfish perspective. In other words, if all you think about is yourself all the time, and, and, and in other words, Jesus did not contradict the devil. The devil said that God has provisions for humans in general or created beings. He has very nice created things for you for a 60 to 70 year promise, which is a general promise in your Bible. I'm not going to go to that scripture, but God generally grants most humans 70 years. That's a generalization. All people are not given 70 years. We can see that in, in our love in the womb lesson here, that that's not the case. More specifically, we can look at David, and he had a stillborn child, and he was very sad about it, obviously. But the point is that uh, that's not 70 years of living. Point being, David said he was going to see the baby in heaven. Which I didn't even put down on, in this lesson, but I'll mention it right now. I did not mention that. That's another part of love in the womb. Because David had love for the child, 
before the child was born, he identified it as a human being, and when it was still born dead, obviously, or apparently, I'm going to say obviously, uh, uh, probably some of the punishment for the Bathsheba incident, but that's neither here nor there. The bottom line is, is that he was very bummed out about it, and he said that he would see the child, even though it was never actually uh, out breathing oxygen. We have a multitude of references to substantiate our perspective uh, that, that, that we are very much reasonable people who love babies in the womb and call them babies. And we've been doing that from time immemorial. Uh, George Washington, the first president of the United States, said that, that, uh, that babies were babies in the womb and so forth. We, we, you, want, you want to go back to the American history, in, in American history, you'll find that we generally have taught that this here. Now, recently, there's been a large contingency of citizens who do not agree with that original citizenship uh, commonwealth ideology. However, we won't go into that, but that's just their perspective. But we, we don't know too much about that. The, the only perspective I know is a love perspective. So if there's another perspective out there, I really don't want to hear about it, especially if it's not a love perspective because the Bible says to be ignorant of evil. You turn on Fox News here in America, they're really into giving you details about the evil that men do, or this guy's laptop. I really don't want a lot of information related to what evil that men do in pictures and what they're doing now. I, I, no. <laughs> we, no. It's okay for you to inform me, per se, but make, make your information <gasps> like super quick, dude, because we don't have time to study evil. I don't have time to study how people don't want to love babies, for instance. I don't want to study it. I don't want to know anything about it. And, 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 we, and we can go to... And we, we can go to one of my favorite scriptures since we're on this issue. We're, we're only on number one, but that's okay. Listen, you know what? Uh, uh, Jeremiah don't play. You know, we, uh, as my buddy used to say, he don't play. You know, which is bad grammar. Don't don't say that. But that that's more funny bonnets or something. But uh, uh, Jeremiah don't play. Jeremiah don't play around. Or he is known for being. A person who does not play around might be a little better grammar for us there. But anyway, John 14, 30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. He, he said we're not going to talk anymore because here comes the wicked people. I, I don't have a lot of talk with wicked people or gang members, you know, I, I see them, I, I saw an obvious gang member at the grocery store here the other day, at uh, the gas station. I'm from the hood, I spent part of my life in the hood. I can identify a gang member in three seconds flat, and, 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 and when you see them at the store, it's not a good idea, it's not good. That's, you don't want to, uh, uh, you know, Anything can happen, kind of. You know, they're, they're, they're volcanoes of evil. And uh, point being is I don't want to know what they talk about. I, I turned the, the videos on. I've seen them recently where, they, where some of these thugs are spitting out violence and they don't have proper clothing on or something, tattoos. And, you know, it, 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 it's just hell on earth. And we don't want to know too much about it. We'd rather just leave the TV off, uh, you know, and... I have to go online because I put videos online, and every now and then I'll make the mistake of browsing around, so to speak, but uh, you just don't want to get involved in what the mind of, of, of the enemy is doing, which we might call uh, 30 uh, in the matrix. 30 is dirty. I call it the, 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 the evil that men do and so forth. We're not here to expose too much evil. We're not. Uh, the Bible says to do, do so, but we, we don't have time for details. And the, one of the best references is where I just, the master said, the conversation's over. We've been talking about love and the future, going to heaven. I have a place for you. Uh, love me because I love you. Which is all the master says over and over again in the chapter. 
In other words, we're not going to talk about love anymore because the people who are coming around us don't want to talk about love. See, so why do we want to talk about it? That's the point. Our conversation is over between you and I because we're heart-to-heart -heart people. Here comes people who aren't heart-to-heart. -heart. So let's just freeze. I don't have a lot of time. Just like the master said here, the, the, the devil has nothing in me. I, I don't have a lot of time talking about so-and-so's laptop that I saw on TV. I don't have time for it. Because that individual who is obviously probably taking drugs or fornicating or whatever, I don't want to know too much about it. That's my point. We want to talk about going to heaven, like we're talking about right now, babies and how these new pictures are wonderful. One of the reasons why I decided to, to have a couple of videos on love in the womb was because of these new cameras that they have and so forth that are, some of them, are, I think most of them are composites. But uh, wonderful images. Okay, well, let's take advantage of it. I'm the kind of person, I'm not mad at technology. I'm not some kind of person that wants to wear, wear, wear pilgrim shoes and, and, you know, and can't buy a TV. That's not my point But when I go there. We don't have a lot of time for modernity because I don't need it. That's the point. I don't need mo modernity. You know, you, you, you give me a place to use a bathroom, a doctor, uh, you know, a lawyer, you know, uh, a clean house with, with some fried chicken, and, and I'm done. I don't need anything else. You give me a shower with soap and, and, and a place to sleep and, and, and a heater and a cooler, you know, a swamp cooler or something, okay, uh, and a doctor, uh, maybe a dentist, okay, the conversation is over. I do not. I don't need an, uh, any other stimuli. That's just the way it goes for us pilgrims here. I, I don't. Uh, we, we we have what we need. We're like the Beverly Hillbillies on television here years back, where Jed was sitting in front of the house. He was he was chopping on some wood, and that's all he wanted to do. He had food and shelter, and and and. And that's basically what we do here. We don't chop wood all day here, uh, or wickle, I guess is the word. We study, study all day long. We have hours of study here just about every day. Because that's what the master told me to do. He told you to do the same thing. Learn of me. Okay, that's the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower is being lived out right now. That means at the end of the chapter, you're going to be the one who enters in. Because you were disciplined. Discipline is going to get you in the door. That's what the parable of the sower is. And the master basically calls that the head parable. That's the number one boy. What are parables? Parables are teachings to help you understand commandments. That's what parables are. Or to give you a good idea of what happens to you when you obey those commandments. To help you understand the commandments, to help you implement the commandments. To help you understand what happens to you when you obey the commandments. That's what parables are for. Now there, there can be some history and some prophecy involved, but th that's basically what it is. I have not given a lesson on on uh, parables uh, only a few times in the five years that we've had this particular servitude as an Israelite who is enjoying the commonwealth. We have the keys to the city. You have the crown of David on your head, Psalm 21. Thou hast prevented you with blessings and placed a crown of fine gold upon your head. You can't beat that. Where can you beat that? I don't think you can beat Psalm 21. If you think you can do better than David, I, I, I think you're, 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 you are in a conundrum of some sort. You are a little mixed up out there, okay? You, 
you are in Babylon for sure, which means a confused place. Now, let's get back to love in the womb. We, we, uh, number one is huge. It, it's, you're a human breathing machine is what you are. And God breathed in your first inhale to your balloons. Then you exhale, and that's called respire. When the baby is born, the same procedure repeats again because the baby has been living on liquid. It's a water baby. We're all water babies born out of water. And when you start breathing in that red dirt, then that becomes a living being that has a body, okay? That can experience life or beauty, which we've just gone into heavily here, which is 7.1. You're experiencing life and beauty. That's what you're experiencing. God knows that you, that you enjoy colors and design. He, he made it. That's, and he's watching you. We're going to talk about that uh, in, the, in these videos here. He's watching you enjoy it. Isn't he? He made eyes, so I guess he's got them. Number two is human breath, man. Own new life. And of course, what we're talking about here is the Bible says that you must be born again. And we can go to John again since we're in John. We can go to John here and, and look at that where Jesus tells uh, Nicodemus, who is a Pharisee teacher, who is not very bright. He, he knows a little bit about the, the law, but he doesn't know much else. He doesn't know, probably know David very well. He doesn't know Solomon very well. He most assuredly doesn't know what Mary knows, uh, which is she's expecting uh, a blessing from God by mercy. He doesn't know mercy that well. He doesn't, he doesn't talk about mercy. He's just like a robot. And the master is telling him that you must be born again, and he's not born again. He's just a human, and that's what the master is telling him. That you're basically a human, and even though you're an Israelite, you're, you're, about as, you're about as intelligent as a Gentile living on an island somewhere. You don't know anything. And you must be born again. So you have to be born once, and you have to be born twice in order to get into the kingdom of God. Now, this, this uh, set of videos is going to emphasize the first time you're born and how significant it is and how the Bible talks about it, okay? I think David's going to be our prime resource, but uh, we, we won't say if he is the prime because I didn't check. I haven't checked whether it's Asaph, the son of Nun, or, you know, we, we haven't, uh, I haven't referenced that um, uh, for this lesson, which I could have done or should have done maybe, I don't know. Number two is your breath, man, your breath dirt. When you're born, you are oxygen in dirt. That's what you are. And the dirt was originally essentially like red dirt. Got it? Like you're in New Mexico or something. Now, number three is reproduction. Two lives can create another life. Which means that life has two authors in the flesh. Okay? That makes a third being. Okay, that means that the man and woman own a separate human or breath man or breath child. Number four is high definition images are going to be used here to show you uh, and put boots on the ground right in your face the beauty of a child and, and to point out that some of these children have hair and so forth. And, and, and some of the qualities. Now, of course, we're getting into science here, which is 15 on my list, which is give me, give me some science, give me some biology. Well, we're, obviously, we're going to get into a little bit of number 15 here. For those of you interested in my science lesson, I just put up some more science lessons giving you uh, true science from the Bible, which is 99% different than uh, maybe 99.9.9 .9 or 99.999. <laughs> Listen, my father taught me my earth dad. I, I, I'm very fortunate. I have two loving dads. I have an earth dad who is very loving, and I have a heavenly father who is also loving and caring and intelligent. I was very fortunate to have two or at, at one time. Now, 
we have these high definition videos that are showing us just like as I mentioned let me finish my thought that my dad told me don't believe anything you hear that's what my dad told me he said basically be nice to people and say oh that's interesting and but don't buy into it and that's what my dad taught me basically one of the things he taught me was and now I have my Heavenly Father teaching me the same thing because the Bible says don't put your confidence in men A lot of people watch television and they, and, they, and they put their confidence because the person is smiling, they have good teeth in their mouth, and, and they have a watch on, and, and they're being very nice that what they're saying is true. The Bible teaches us in Matthew uh, that, that, that you can have a sheep in a wolf's clothing. In other words, well-dressed people who are smiling, but they're not nice people, and they're ravenous, the Master says. They're very greedy people, and they're not nice people. They're just putting on a, what we call a front, F-O-R-N-T. F-R-O-N-T. What did I say? Front, I'm sorry. Front. front. Let, me, let me get my uh, consonants in order. Now, let's get going now. And my dad taught me this, so when I have science or I give science to you, I make sure that it's proven uh, through the Bible and so forth. And very few people have, have, have engaged my science. I, uh, I don't know, you know, there are different factors, but let's move on to uh, science germane here, which is uh, babies are born, and we're going to get into this, okay? And once again, these uh, videos that I have online, I have one on that, that's very it's long, but I have a lot of very beautiful high-definition pictures. And if you haven't clicked those on, I encourage you to do so, okay? Uh, when time permits. Let's go to number five, which is agape is high love. Uh, the word agape, the word agape is probably, it's like the word servant or servant child or these terms. Uh, the, these are the big heavy hitters for Bible, for Bible students and followers of the lovable master Jesus Christ who we anticipate coming in the clouds any moment. And so that we can be with the one that we do have a lot of affection for, and that is our lovable Master Jesus Christ. But the the word agape means that you're you're living in a high realm. You're not living in an affection world. You're, you're not a rodent in a cage. You don't have a ceiling on affections. Gentiles are basically known by Israelites as people who have affections, but they're uncircumcised affections. That's why David called Goliath uncircumcised, because he's not a very caring person, and he's also not very intelligent. David knows the origins of mankind, uh, where heaven is located. Basically, he, he told you basically where heaven is located. Job told you that there's a lot of water on top of your head. These people are scientific, they're intelligent, caring people, and that's why we are grafted in Jews because we are also learning how to be caring people and like the pilgrims they celebrate tomorrow. Very intelligent, caring people who are candidates for going to heaven because that's the way you have to behave in order to go to heaven. It's just that difficult. The word agape is huge. Like the word Eve is very important because it means new. Babies are new humans that God has breathed four ounces of soul in. That human did not exist before, before the woman created the body and God put in the soul. That's called suke and sarx in the Greek. So you have a new person, and Jesse means that God is alive, and if God is alive, he can give life. The master refers to it. I'm not going to go to that right now. Then there's another Hebrew word I want to mention, which is Abigail. Abigail is a very significant word. Just like Zerlinda is a very significant word. Abigail is a very significant word because it means father's joy. 
if God didn't, if God wasn't happy to create you, he would not create you. I'll say it one more time. This is very significant for this child video here on children and babies. If God did not, if he was not happy in creating you, he would not have created you because God does everything basically in laughter and joy. A lot of people don't think about this. The Bible says that God rejoices with you Christian people who are out loving and caring for people. He is rejoicing with your excitement. He's not a deadhead. He's very much alive. He's very much a firework exploding with love and happiness, which is, which is what I would do in my life since I've been a Christian most of my life. I have ex been excited and rejoiced and exploded over people giving me pressed down, shaken together compassion. Luke 6. Okay? So Jesse and Abigail, let's, let's mention one more Hebrew word, abib. Abib is a word that refers to a, 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 a sprout, somebody who's new, somebody who's fresh. Abib. We can use that term for someone who is a, uh, as Paul said, a, a newborn Christian who is drinking milk. That's called a babe in Christ and so forth. Now let's move on to seven, which is highest love. Now agape is highest love based upon these qualities such as it's new, such as you have a soul, such as you can laugh and rejoice, such as you can enjoy uh, beauty, which is uh, 7.1 that we've just hammered home in this ministry, and that's the highest love. Remember, there's, there, there's affection, and then there's high love. There's basically only two realms uh, that humans exist in. They either exist in a roller coaster of emotions, and, and, and all of a sudden they're high, and then next five minutes, they're down on their luck. That is not the Israelite mindset. That's not the agave love that the master refers to in the Gospels. He's the first one to really introduce agape and the, and the, and, and the idea that being a Christian or a Jew, uh, such as Jacob or Israel, and his new name, or David or Daniel or Elijah, these individuals are living in a, in a, they're living in a, in, a, in a life that is separate from the world. And the reason why is because ownership. They own intelligence as to what's going on in their world, and they own the agape love of God in their hearts. So they're, they're experiencing high love, and they're experiencing high intelligence, or true knowledge. So that makes them uh, a, a, an excellent person, or, uh, or, or a citizen of Zion. Zion means high life, like Zipporah, means a high bird, Moses' wife. So you have high life, and that high life has to have high love, or real, true, deep, uh, bango, smacko, uh, hit you hard love. Now a lot of people, let's talk about this for a moment, let me talk about this. A lot of people think that out being out there in the world uh, as a Gentile, without God, they're going to experience love. They're, they'll never experience agape love. They will experience affection and, they, and, and maybe phileo and so forth, which is friendly love kind of thing, but they'll never experience the high explosion, as, as Peter said, or, or, or who said that? Um, the fervent love. They'll never know that. There'll, there'll always be a ceiling on what they experience. And we have this in our playlist on number nine, new wine. The master said new wine does not go in old wine skins. You're not going to get God's joy and his love until you go to his son and do what, you, do what you were told to do. That's the way it goes. He who has the son has agape, high love. He, he who has not the son has no agape in him. Let's continue. And of course, these babies are, are being introduced 
to these to these capacities ok and that's what i want to point out here is that the capacity is is from god and they get the capacity ok i'm going to point that out to you point that out in, in luke chapter one where elizabeth is going to tell her her, her cousin there Mary, that the baby is excited listening to you talk. So the baby in the womb can experience excitement. That's common sense. And we Christians, we take in common sense. Why? Because God has given us a mind so that we will never, we will never push away or, or have any rebellion against that which is logical. That which makes sense, we will embrace. Because that's what Jesus says, the truth. He is reality. He is actualization. So a born-again Christian, in general, will, will absorb all the beautiful truth in the world. I'm going to stop right here. We have one more video for the day. We we're kind of dragging, but that's okay. Because I really want to hammer all these first points. I'll be right back with part three, and that will be it for my day, okay? Maranatha, Paul the Apostle. We're constantly talking about getting out of here. In spite of the fact that we have joy today, we're still the old uh, American entertainment uh, thing, you know, with the, with the very sad mask and the very happy mask. We wear both of these masks. Just as the theater has presented that humans experience. Okay, I'll be right back. Maranatha, shalom, and amen.